In this video, we are going to look at some sample practice questions on AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. And we have already covered 160 questions in the previous parts. So please do check out them for a broader and complete syllabus coverage. And I will also share some AWS documentation so that you can do some self-study, understand the concepts and validate the answers given. So let's get started. Question number 161, part 17. The question is saying a user is comparing purchase options for an application that runs on Amazon EC2 and Amazon RDS. Now the application cannot sustain any interruptions. The application experiences a predictable amount of usage, including some seasonal spikes that last only a few weeks at a time. And also it is not possible to modify the application which purchase option meets these requirements most cost effectively. Your options are option A security, option B reliability, option C performance efficiency and lastly option D cost optimization. And friends in case you have already picked the cost optimization as the answer by looking at this part of the question. Well that would be incorrect. The correct answer for this question is option B reliability. So let's understand what is reliability which comes under the five pillars of AWS well architected framework. So here you can see reliability pillar includes the reliability pillar encompasses the ability of a workload to perform its intended function correctly and consistently what it is expected to do. And this includes the ability to operate and test the workloads throughout its total life cycle. And also you can understand what are the design principles here you can understand what are the five design principles for reliability in the cloud. So first of all we have automatically recover from the failures. We also have test recovery procedures scale horizontally to increase aggregate workloads availability and then we have stop guessing the capacity and lastly manage change in automation. You can read all these definition and all these pointers and details for all of these. And as always I will share links to all the documentation in the description box. Moving on with the question number 162, question is saying that what are the some of the advantages to transition your business data and services over to the AWS cloud and remember you have to choose two correct options and the given options are option A operational resilience, option B discounts for the products on amazon.com and option C business agility, option D business excellence and lastly option E increased staff retention. And remember you have to choose two correct options. The first correct option is option A operational resilience and then we have option C business agility. I wish this option B was also correct but sadly it is not. Let's understand what is operational resilience. And here you can understand that operational excellence includes the ability to support development and run workloads effectively and gain insights into their operations and continuously improve supporting processes and procedures to deliver business value. And friends, I cannot emphasize more on six pillars of AWS well architected framework. You will most definitely get some questions from this area. And here you can understand what are the principles or five design principles of operational excellence. Here you can understand perform operation as a code, make frequent small reversible changes, refine operations procedures frequently, anticipate failure and learn from all operational failures. And these pointers are very important my friends because in the actual question or in the actual exam you might get some questions which probably will include one of these design principles. So please understand them thoroughly from the exam point of view. And also let's understand what is business agility. Well in the AWS words it's simply put adopting AWS helps the business to move faster whether that means getting innovative product to the market before your competitors, taking advantage of the fresh opportunities quickly expanding to new geographies, accelerating or increasing pace of the experimentation. So I hope you understood both the operational resilience and business agility. And now let's quickly jump on to the question number 163 that says which AWS service or features provide disaster recovery solution for Amazon EC2 instances and once again you have to choose two correct options. And the given options are option A reserved instances, option B EC2 Amazon machine images or AMIs, option C AWS shield, option D Amazon elastic block store snapshots which are also known as Amazon EBS and lastly option E Amazon guard duty. 
Well, the first correct option is option B, EC2, Amazon Machine Images or AMIs. And then second correct option is option D, Amazon Elastic Block Store Snapshots. Now you may ask, what is Amazon Machine Images? Well, Amazon Machine Image is a template that contains a software configuration. For example, an operating system, an application server and application. And from one AMI, you can launch an instance, which is a copy of the AMI running as a virtual server in the cloud. And you can launch multiple instances of one AMI as shown in the following figure. Here you can see that we have one AMI and we are launching multiple instances on the host computer. And also in case you want to understand what are the instances that is also given here. But then my friends, I just want to show you one more documentation on Amazon machine images. And that one is this. And here on this documentation, you can actually understand what exactly is AMI. Not only that, you can understand how to use an AMI, how to create your own AMI. And also how can you buy, share and sell AMIs. So all the documentation is given here in this one big documentation. And now let's quickly jump to the question number 164. The question is saying a company is planning to replace its physical on-premises compute servers with AWS serverless compute services. And also the company wants to be able to take the advantages of advanced technologies as quickly as they do the migration. Which pillar of AWS well architecture framework does this plan represent? And your options are option A, security, option B, performance efficiency, option C, operational excellence, and lastly, reliability. And the correct answer is option B, performance efficiency. So now let's understand what is performance efficiency. Well, this pillar includes the ability to use computing resources efficiently to meet the system requirements and to maintain efficiency as the demand changes and technology evolve. And once again, you can read all the five design principles that comes under performance efficiency. First of all, it says democratize advanced technologies. And then you have go global in minutes. You can also use the serverless architectures, experiment more often and consider mechanical sympathy. And with that quick documentation on performance efficiency, let's move on to the question number 165. It says that I require different levels of access on my application that is installed on EC2 instance. Now I have configured an ENI for the same purpose. Which of the following statement is incorrect? And please note, you have to choose the incorrect statement. So what are the given options? Well, the first option is that I can detach the primary ENI of my EC2 instance and connect it to another instance for moving its elastic IP. Option B, I can configure a security group for my ENI and restrict the traffic to EC2 instance. And then at option C, we have I can detach a secondary EMI containing private IP from the one EC2 instance and then attach it to another one. And then the option D, I can attach the elastic IP to an EC2 instance in the another subnet by releasing it from the ENI in the current subnet to which it is currently attached to. And the correct answer to this question or the incorrect statement that we were to choose is given in the option A. I can detach the primary ENI of my EC2 instance and then connect it to another instance for moving its elastic IP. And friends, the ENIs that we were discussing in the question, they are also known as elastic network interfaces. And these interface is a logical networking component in a VPC that represents a virtual network card. And this one includes the following attributes. And here you can understand all the primary attributes of elastic network interfaces. And in case you're looking for more documentation, you can always come down here and understand more on this. So basically you can click on this and here you can understand what are the network interface basics and all the other information around the same. So those were the sample practice question for today. I hope you enjoyed the question. And as always, in case you have some doubts, do let me know in the comment section. You can also reach us at our email ID, connect us at the rate thetechblackboard.com. And in case you want some additional learning materials, for example, the PDF file for any of our videos. In that case also, you can email us at connectors at the rate the techblackboard.com. And please include the AWS documentation in your exam preparation. Read our blogs to enhance your learning. Like the video, subscribe to the channel as we bring multiple videos and shorts every week to enhance your knowledge and exam preparations on both AWS and Microsoft Azure. That's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.